Well, praise the Lord. Let's get started this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's just get started this morning. We're going to open up in a word of prayer this morning. But before we do that, let me just say, we just want to just give God praise and glory. Amen? Amen. I tell you, God is at work. Listen to me. God is in control of everything. Amen. Amen. I, I just want to shout that out. We sometimes forget with all that we've seen going on, and we'll be praying for some things today. We'll be praying for Ukraine and many things that's happening. But I want to say to you this morning, God is in control, and don't ever, ever forget it. Say with me, say, all things work together for the good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a word for us today. Father, we just come right now in the blessed name of Jesus. And we thank you that as we gather in this place today, we know that your word says that you would be here in the midst of us. We ask that your spirit would move among us and that you would just bless us with those things you have for us today. As we lift our voice and worship you in praise, may you hear, oh God, our hearts. That, that, that worship you for because of who you are. Not just because of what all you have done, but because of who you are. We thank you, Father. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercy and for your loving kindness. We thank you for the abundance of grace that you have poured upon us. This morning, our prayers go out for those who may be sick and not able to come out this morning. We pray for the shut-in, O oh God, that you would go in the midst of where they at, and some who are looking on YouTube and other ways, a live stream, that they would be able to be touched by your word. Father, we pray for Ukraine and for the war that is going on in that country. And, O oh God, we ask that you would bring it to a halt, that you would bring it to a stop. But, O oh God, we pray that in these days you would give your people a spirit of discernment that we may hear from you and know what is taking place in our world today, that we will fall before you and we will humble ourselves before you and hear your voice. Father, I thank you for this service. Bless all that comes in today. May we all receive the joy of the Lord in our hearts. That's our strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the saints say amen. Let's worship together this morning. Standing up. <laughs> Stand up. Let your glory go on and on. 
Let's give him a shout of praise this morning.
today you're the same yesterday today and forever and we will see your glory still today we believe your God of miracles we will see signs wonders and miracles before us we will see your kingdom here in this place we declare your glories in this place this morning be glorified Lord
gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down Never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. Cause you are. Your goodness is running 
Oh, Lord God, we celebrate you this morning, Lord God. We praise you this morning, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that you're unchangeable, God. You're unchangeable, God. You will never change, Lord. Everything around us, Lord, everything that's surrounding us, Lord, things that's happening in the world, Lord Jesus. But you say in your word that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Isn't that wonderful news? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise and worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. At this time, I would like you all to shake someone's hand, hug someone if you will, just greet each other, and we'll do that for a few seconds. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise your holy name, Lord God. Thank you all. Good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How you doing, baby? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Woo, good news. Good news. Hallelujah. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we glad? All right, all right. Praise the name of Jesus. All right, all right. All right, now. Woo, wasn't that wonderful? Well, we'll get back in our seats and we'll continue on and we'll hear some word pretty soon. All right, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. And I wanted to say welcome 
Welcome those that's on YouTube. Welcome those that's live streaming. Welcome those who are on Facebook and also Instagram. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank the congregation here this morning for each and every one of you all that came out to worship the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to have time set aside to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. But most of all, to gather here together and praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? That uplifts us. Amen. To keep on another day. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, if we have any visitors in the house, first-time visitors, I would like to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for participating. Thank you for coming out, taking your time to come out to be with us. And if you will, fill out a visitor's card. And we have a small gift after church for you. And we just say thank you, thank you, thank you once again for visiting with us. All right. Well, this morning I would like to say uh, we have on our board here, Change for Mission. As you know, we give change for our mission, which is Turkey and Belize right now. And uh, we have a flower box on the table there. And if you have any corns, or, or dimes, nickels, pennies, or whatever you want to contribute, it, please feel free to drop it in that flower box on the table to my right and your left. And uh, we'll collect that and we'll distribute that to our missions, all right. Marriage Weekend. And if you look up on your board here, we have a QR code. And if you take a picture of that QR code, it'll send you to a link. And on that, on that link, it'll show you all the, the activities we have here at Go Church. And you can pick which activity that you want to join. You know, the marriage seminar would be on March the 25th and the 26th. And that's on strengthening marriages. And it'll be $155 a couple. And if you go on that QR code, you'll see the, uh, more information. It'll cover the hotel, the uh, dinner, and also, uh, yeah, registration. That's $155 a couple. All right. Passover dinner next. And now you see that QR code again, please link in. And it's on April the 10th for $30. And we ask you that you dress up uh, for that. All right. Join our grow team, QR code again, and join our grow team on Wednesday night. Lord, we've been having some good word at the grow team, G-R-O-W team. And those that come out can testify to that. And we was on Genesis, but now I think we're going to be on James next. That's our next uh, book we're going to be in. So if you want to study James now, so when you come together, you have more questions to ask, right? Amen. All right. At this time, I have some encouraging words uh, for you. And uh, it's going to come out of Joshua 1, 9. If you want to write that down, it will be Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, it says, be strong in a good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. How many of you believe that? The Lord is always with you. And sometimes that's why we have to, we have to all the time we need to carry ourselves in a certain way, right? You say, would Jesus like what I'm doing? And straighten up. If, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and just remember that. And remember, through all our challenges, through all what we go through, through these hard times, these difficult times that we have, and now in these days, he's with us. Don't He would say, never leave us nor forsake us. So he is with us. Amen. Now I'll go down to tithes. You know we have four ways of giving. And if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. We have urshas that will pass the basket. We'll pass you an envelope. And we do it in person here at the church. And we fill out an a, a envelope and we put our names on it. And the reason why we do that is because you can get credited for the end of the year. You get a statement, a contribution statement at the end of the year. And please put Tom Ball excuse me, it's talking about campus on that uh, envelope or on your check. So that way you can get, uh, it'll get, uh, it'll go for this church here since we have two campuses on, all right? We can go online. We go online at uh, gochurch.org uh, slash give if you want to do it online. Or you can text it. If you want to text in your tithes and offerings, you can text it to 84321 as if you want to text it in, all right? Or you can do it, like I said, the old-fashioned way. You can go by mail, 
And you can do it at P.O. Box 1261, Katy, Texas, 77492, if you would like. And, um, and that's how we do our tithes and offering here at this church. And at this time, I'd like to bring Brother Leroy up, and he's going to share something, some more with you on about the tithes and offering. Uh, we have Brother Leroy at this time. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. How are we doing this morning? You could have kept going, you know. I would have talked, I would have talked to Pastor Aker for you, okay? <laughs> but this is really a blessing, amen, as we keep getting God moving in this place. It's, it's exciting, amen. It's truly exciting. So he's, he's asked me this morning to come kind of bring some encouragement this morning on our tithes and our offering, those kind of things. I know you're all giving, so just a little word for me this morning. But one thing that God prompted my heart about this week as he called me was that if we look back to the back of the room, we're in a place that we should all be challenged now to say, Lord, I want to be a part of that. You see the pictures on the wall back there, all those pictures? That's what we're coming into. That's going to be your building, my building, Amen. It's not going to be pastor's building, but our building, amen? That's the, that's the key for all of this, amen, to know that God has given us all to us. I get excited when I start thinking about things like this, how good God is to each one of us. But he gave me a word. I want to just share this word with you. Now, just to realize that tithing is, is an old, old principle, but a new principle as well. It was given in the, in the Old Testament, and it's given again in the New Testament. So when somebody say, well, it's just an Old Testament guideline or principle, not so. It's also a New Testament principle. God has called each one of us to tithe every day. Amen. I could tell you many stories, but we don't have time to go through our stories. Uh, my wife and I from San Francisco, we don't have time to go through all that. What we saw God do back there, when the church was running short of funds, God would bring somebody on Monday morning and say, now your rent's paid today. See, see, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't own a building in San Francisco. It just, there was no space to build a building. So we had to rent space. When you start thinking about a small space for $4,000 in, in 1997, that's a lot of money. But God started sending help from the East Coast, from the middle of the country, out to the West Coast. Right, hon? I mean, it was like, okay, what are you worried about, Leroy? God got you covered, brother. But the other thing he spoke up to me this week as I was looking at this, he said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. All the tithes. He didn't say just part of them, but all the tithes. Amen. I was challenged by that years ago, Brother Tracy. I would get a check in. I said, well, honey, can we afford to do this? Guess what she would say? We can't afford not to. <laughs> So we had to make sure that we were giving as God had called us to give, amen? But the challenging part of this is that he said also that if you do this, then he will open the windows of heaven and pour you out what? Blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He told me don't preach this morning, okay? So I'm going to preach, okay? <laughs> but the other challenging part to, to realize that God is still awesome, he said, and also he said that I will also rebuke the devourer. Those things that pull your funds when they shouldn't be pull, being pulled. But God said, I will rebuke the devourer of your funds. Wow. That's a good one to think about. Because somebody's always wanting more. See, I, I, I get mail every day. said, uh, Leroy, uh, your gas pipeline may be getting old. Okay. So would you put 5 or $10 in this basket and say, hey, We'll take care of your gas and pipeline or your water pipes. Everybody wants something, but I don't get an increase in my check. But God said, I will provide. Amen. The word of God says, give, and we're giving what? Unto you. Press down, running over with God giving to your bosom. I know I'm done, Pastor Edgar, but it just, it's just something else here real quick that what God showed me years ago, he gave me a garbage, bag, a garbage basket. And one Sunday, I just put all this paper in a, in a garbage basket, and I put my foot on it, pressed it down. He said, now, fill it up again. I pressed it down again. 
And God said, I'll, I'll fill it up again till it's running over for you. So whatever you're in need of today, just say, Lord, I'm in need of it. And leave it at that point and know that he will provide. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you right now for your many blessings, oh God. We thank you for life itself today, Lord God. We just pray over each one of these in this place today, Lord God, that you will bless, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Awesome, awesome. Who is happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yeah. Um, so before I dive in this morning, um, I just wanted to hit on a couple of things that uh, Sister Deborah hit during announcements. Um, we do have our marriage weekend coming up on March, uh, I think it's the 25th and the 26th. Um, there's two spots left. There's two spots left, okay? So if anybody's interested, today's the last day to sign up and pay. So if you're interested, please, you don't even have to take a picture of the QR code, just scan it and a little link will pop up on your phone. You'll be able to sign up from there. Um, and then also the Passover uh, dinner. That's going to be a great time as well. Uh, we're actually going to be bringing in a rabbi to come in, and he'll kind of walk us through kind of the whole Passover Seder and what every, you know, everything signifies, you know, what, what is the significance of it as far as in biblical times as well. And so super excited for that. There's only 70, 75 spots left, or 75 spots total. In that I think we're about a third of the way signed up. And so if you're interested in that, make sure that you do that soon. Um, and if you didn't get a chance to scan that QR code, we'll have it at the end of service up so that you're able to scan that and sign up. So everything good? Everybody good? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Everybody had a good week? Go to the weekend. You should go to the marriage weekend. You should. That's all. Yeah. We'd love to see you there. We'd love to see you there. Yeah. One of the, one of the things that, that we say is, is, you know, attending the marriage weekend doesn't mean that your marriage is in trouble. That means that you want to strengthen your marriage. Whether you're in a good place or a bad place, everybody's marriage can use some strengthening. And so please, if, if you would love to sign up for that, please let us know, and we'd love to get you signed up for that. And so um, the, the title for today's message is Staying Encouraged. Everybody say, Staying Encouraged. Um, we talked a few, weeks about, a few weeks ago about, you know, uh, why, you know, we, we kind of in, encounter hard times throughout our walk as Christians, uh, throughout our walk with the Lord. Um, and, and this morning, you know, we kind of talked about why a couple weeks ago. So this morning, I kind of want to talk about what we do when we encounter those times. Because like we talked about a few weeks ago, those times are going to come. We're going to reach points in our lives where we're discouraged. We're going to po reach points in our lives where things aren't all, all rainbows and sunshine, right? We're, we're, we're going to be looking this morning at a, a passage in 1 Samuel chapter 30, if you have your Bible with you this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Um, and, and this is a little bit of background here before we dive into this. Um, we're going to be starting in verse 1 there. But before we get into this passage, right, David and his men had, had, are on their way home. They're traveling home. They had just tried to join the, the army of the Philistines. They had just tried to make themselves an ally with the Philistines. Um, and the Philistines were like, no, thanks. We're good. We, we know who you are. We're afraid that you're going to turn on us. So we're just going to send you back on home. So David and his men begin their journey back home, and we're going to jump in here in verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 30. It says, Now it happened, when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Can we just take a moment to pray this morning? Father, we're, we're here before you this morning. Father, with open hearts. Father, to what you want to say, what you want to speak to us this morning. Lord, if we're carrying discouragement this morning, Father, I just pray that by the end of today, we're able to hand that over to you. Father, we thank you that you're a God 
that doesn't trade fairly, Lord. We, we thank you that you're a God who, who accepts our, our sorrow and, and our hurt and our pain, and you replace it with joy and with peace and with your love. So, Father God, I pray that that is the case this morning over this body. Every person in this place, Lord, that we would be able to hand you our discouragement. We would be able to hand you our hurts, hand you our pain, Father God. That we would be courageous enough to accept what you give us in return. So, Father, we, we open our hearts to you this morning. We open our ears to what you have to say. We just thank you for this morning. Your mighty, powerful name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 I found it interesting in this passage Right, because we, we often think of David as 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 the Bible describes him, a man after God's own heart. Right, we think of of kind of how we talked about last week. We tend to kind of put these Bible characters on a pedestal and fail to realize that they were men and women just like us. Right, he, we we see David's humanity in the midst of this situation. He's in distress, and rightly so. He's he's troubled at what has just happened. Right, so Bible scholars believe that this was the third day of travel for, for David and his men. And every single one of those days, they had traveled 25 miles a day, on foot, no less. They were tired, right? They, they, were, they were more than likely tired. They were hungry. I told you guys I don't like to run or not even walk, so I would be miserable in this story. They were tired. They were hungry. And I would imagine that they were ready to receive the comfort and love of their families. They, they were coming back home to where they had set up camp in Ziklag, However, the Bible tells us that that was not at all what they received when they arrived there. Their families had been captured by the enemy and they were now being held as captives. And as if that weren't enough, as that, if that wasn't hurtful enough, David is now facing the reality of his men seriously considering turning on him in the worst way. The word tells us that they were speaking of stoning him, talking about killing him, compounding everything else that was going on. David at this point in his life was honoring God, and trying to honor Saul while he was running for his life. Trying to do his best, trying to do what God was asking of him, and yet this happens. We can feel his pain and agony in verse 4 where it says, Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever wept and cried so much that you just couldn't cry anymore? You couldn't weep any longer? This morning, I want to pose the question to you, have you felt discouraged lately? There's something going on in your life that life has thrown you a curveball that you weren't expecting. Have you wept? Have you been mourning? Have you been in tears? Have you been trying to do your best to follow God, to do things the way that he's asked for you to do them, and yet things don't look the way that you thought they would? Have the people in your life turned on you? Have they betrayed you? Have they hurt you? David can relate in this story to you this morning. Like we talked about a few weeks ago, discouragement is going to come. Trials are going to come. Valleys are going to happen. People are going to let you down. There's a saying that hurt people often hurt people, right? There will be pain, disappointment, unmet expectations, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So what do we do? What do we do when we're trying to be encouraged, but this broken world that we're in literally takes the courage out of us, discourages us. How do we last in our faith walk? I think the first place that, that our minds should go is prayer and reading the word and fasting. These are foundational things that give us a view into God's character, right? They give us a deeper connection and understanding and relationship with who God is. And they get our spirit in line with, with God and his will for our lives. These are the foundations, of how we last through these tough times. Psalm 11 verse 3 says, If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So in the midst of tough times, in the midst of your discouragement, if your foundation is not in the right place, then anything else that you run to is not going to help you. You can run to therapy. You can run to anything else. I'm not, not talking down on therapy. I believe that therapy has its place, right? Partnered with this. You can run to anything in the world but if your foundations are not in the right place, you will not be able to stand. These things, are the prayer and fasting and, and, and reading your words should be a given. These should be the very basis from which everything else that you do and everything else that we talk about today will flow from. 
So this morning, how do we stay encouraged? How do we find confidence in the midst of crisis? We do exactly what David did in this passage. We find our strength in God. We find our strength in God and who he is. We give up our worries, our pains, our stresses, anxieties, hurts, scars, and we believe and trust that he will turn those things around for something better. You're probably in this place, and if you're in the middle of a hard time, you're like, well, that's a lot easier to say than to actually do. But even in our trials and our difficulties, even when we're not able to see it, God is still working. and God is still moving on our behalf. I was reading uh, the book of Exodus this past week, and, and I found something interesting in, in, in chapter 13, where God has just taken Israel out of Egypt. They've just left Egypt. Egypt. They're about to enter the desert. And, and they're beginning their journey. And, and starting in verse 17 of, of Exodus 13, it says, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return back to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. The children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. We see in this passage God purposely leading the people around the land of the Philistines. Don't you love that we don't serve a God who fits into our logic? Right? We, we can't fit God into this box of our brain. And the natural would seem, okay, well, let's just go the quickest way, right? Straight line is the quickest way. But God leads them around, right? Cutting through that land would have made it such a quicker journey for the people of Israel to get to the land that God had promised them. However, there was a massive war going on in the land of the Philistines. And God and all of his knowledge and all of his wisdom said, I can't put my children through that because they'll want to go back to Egypt. This morning, I want to remind you that in your discouragement, God is working on your behalf. God is working on your behalf. How do we tune in to what God is doing in the midst of our courage being taken from us? This morning I have a few practical things for us to do when we face discouragement. When things don't go the way that we expected them to go. To help our hearts get back to where God is and where he wants to take us. The first thing that we can do in the midst of discouragement is praise and give thanks. Praise and give thanks. In this example of of God leading the children of Israel around the land of the Philistines, did that mean that they weren't going to go through trials along their journey? No, right? If we we read his word, they they went through a lot of trials. Went through a lot of things. Granted, a lot of it was because of their own disobedience, but they went through it nonetheless. But I don't believe that God taking them in another direction meant that they weren't going to go through trials. They weren't going to go through difficulties. But I do believe that God was keeping them from something that was potentially even more harmful for them. And I, I love it because in the rough, rough patches of our lives, we, we, we fail to pay attention to what God isn't doing rather than what he, or we, we tend to pay attention to what God isn't doing rather than what he is doing. Right? Uh, when, I was, uh, when I was young, um, my parents uh, back on their property, they have some some peach trees, and so we would go and, and pick peaches. Like whenever it was, whenever they would they would grow, we would go and pick peaches, and we would go out there and just snack on them for a little bit. And it was it's some of my, like my fondest memories with my parents. Um, some of the times it was terrible because it was really hot, and I was not happy. But looking back on it, it's really nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, re- I I specifically remember this one time. I was I was picking peaches with my mom. And, and we had just finished, we had a couple basketfuls, and we were walking back to the house, and I was so excited to go back to the house, because I was tired, it was hot, I was sweaty, and it was, I was like, I'm so excited to take a shower, to lay in my bed, watch some TV, like this is going to be great. And so I'm almost like running, right, and my mom's like trying to keep up, and then at one point she grabs me, and she pulls me back, and she said, no, wait. And at this point, I'm thinking, my mom wants me to go pick some more peaches. Like, mom, I'm done. Like, I can't. I don't want to anymore. I'm, I'm sweaty all over. Like, in places that I should not be sweaty. This is not good. I want to go. And she's like, no, wait. And at the, I'm starting to get frustrated. 
Like, man, I've been here for like hours. We've been picking these peaches. I'm ready to go and lay down. And she's like, son, wait. She points to the ground. And I look and I see a tail just, just crossing in front of us. Wow. And I look, and I'm from West Texas. We get rattlesnakes out there, all right? Love them. They're great. Just kidding. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. And I see this tail, and I see this snake. It's a big rattlesnake. It had just crossed right in front of us. If my mom would not have stopped me, my next step would have stepped on this rattlesnake. I would have ended up in the hospital. But because I didn't understand fully what was happening, I was getting frustrated. Mom, why aren't you letting me go? I want to go to bed. I want to go lay down. Why? I didn't fully understand what she was keeping me from. Do we ever stop and thank God for what he is keeping us from? Do we ever stop and ask God or thank God for what he is keeping from us? Sure, things aren't the way that I want them to be. Sure, things don't look the way that I want them to look. Sure, the amount in my bank account isn't what I would want for it to be. Yes, my spouse and I just blew up and had a big fight on the way over here. But God is still working behind the scenes. God is still working things together for the good of those who love him, for the good, for, for those who are called according to his purpose. Can we this morning find strength in the unseen that God is doing in our lives? Can we notice the little things that he does for us on a daily basis? Can we wake up and thank him for the breath that's in our lungs? Can we be thankful for every breath? Can we be thankful for every beat of our hearts? If, if our bank account doesn't look the way that we want it to, if we just spent $200 on gas yesterday because it's outrageous right now, can we be thankful that we still live in one of the most prosperous nations in the world? Amen. That we don't have to suffer and think about a lot of the things that other nations in the world have to think about. Can we praise him for the little and can we praise him for the big? Can we praise him in the good and in the bad? And this morning I want to challenge us to do this. Can we praise him and celebrate even before he's done what we need for him to do? Do we... I don't think we fully understand what that does to the enemy. The enemy is just throwing everything that he can at us, everything but the kitchen sink, and sometimes the kitchen sink as well. And he's throwing everything he has on us. And when we have the boldness to stand up and celebrate and praise and thank God before our miracle has happened, I can't imagine what that does to the enemy. There's a, there's a story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 where Judah was about to be attacked by their enemies. Instead of, of running into battle in the traditional sense, what they did was they sought God first. They fell on their faces and they, they, they looked to God. They asked him what they should do. And instead of just going into battle regularly, what God told them to do was to put their worship leaders at the front lines of their army. Put their worship leaders on the front line of the army and, and to just praise as they went out to face their opposition. The word goes on to say in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, of Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Something powerful happens when we choose to praise and give thanks before we even see anything move on our behalf. Worship will destroy our enemies. Worship will focus you back to what, imp what is important in the middle of your battle this morning, can I challenge you to turn and, and, and put your focus on him? Can I challenge you to ignore the insecurities, to ignore the discouragement, to ignore the things that you are seeing in front of you that don't look the way that you want them to look? And can you let God fight your battles for you? Can we give him praise and can we give him thanks in the middle of our discouragement this morning? The second thing that we can do when we're facing discouragement, is to look at history. Look at history. And no, this morning I'm not asking you to remember that Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. It's, it's not that kind of history. I think we can all remember the story of, of David and Goliath, right? David, this young man, came out swinging with, with stones and a sling, and he defeated the giant that was Goliath because the Lord was with him, right? My favorite part of that story is in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, starting in verse 34. It says, But David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a sheep from the flock, I went out after it 
and I attacked it. And I rescued the sheep from its mouth, and when it rose up against me, I grabbed it by its mane, struck it, and killed it. Verse 36, your servant has killed both the lion and he's killed the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. And I love this so much. I love it so much because we see that history there. We see the history that David had had in his walk with the Lord. David had, had been through some battles. David, the Bible tells us, had fought some lions. He'd wrestled with some bears while he was tending to that flock of sheep. There was history there that he could look back on. So when he came before Goliath, I love it. He had such a confidence about him. He had such a boldness about him because he knew what he had already conquered before he got to that point. Family, can I remind you this morning that through your life, you've gone through, you've gone through some things. You've experienced some things. But can I also remind you that you're here, that God has kept you, that God has been with you every step of the way. You've been in some battles. You've been in some fights. You've lived some tough times. And, and may I remind us again this morning that it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You're going to go through some things. We live in a world that's broken where terrible and broken things happen. But can I also remind us that God's been faithful to deliver you out of those things? That he has never left you, nor has he forsaken you. Let your history this morning remind you that God is good, that he is right beside you in the middle of your fight. And we remember even the lyrics of the song this morning, that all my life you've been faithful, and you've been so, so good. You may come up against some giants in your journey. You're going to face some things. But can I challenge us to walk into those places with the history that we already have with the Lord? Can we remember the places that he's taken us out of? Can we remember the battles that we've overcome because he was on our side? That he's never left us nor forsaken us and that he doesn't plan on doing that today either. We lean on our history with the Lord. Finally, this morning, could we lean on relationships? Could we lean on relationships? The people that we surround ourselves with make a huge difference in how long or how, how deep our discouragement goes. People are important in our lives. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? The one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. We are designed to need one another, to be in relationship with one another. The people that you surround yourself with matter. Have you ever been around somebody in your life who is just super joyful all the time? Just, just super happy all the time, like you don't understand it? That one person that makes you think, man, don't your cheeks hurt? Like you're always smiling? Like, are you okay? You know, I had this friend in high school who was exactly like that. He was always happy. He was always in a good mood. And, and every time that I was around him, even if I was going through something difficult, I came out of it just encouraged. If I was going through something tough, I came out thinking, man, I can, I got this. I can, I can overcome this, right? And that was just quick, short interactions with him. The people that are around us, the people that we surround ourselves with matter. They make a difference. There's, there's relationships are key in our lives, right? There, there's different types of relationships that we should look to have in our lives, right? There, we should have Paul relationships. Paul, P-A-U-L, Paul. Sorry, I, I say Paul like a Paul, like an animal Paul. Anyway, there you go. Um, we have Paul relationships. These are fathers and mothers in our lives. These are people who give us advice, who give us wisdom and guidance. You know, those people who, who help you see things from a different perspective because they've lived it, because they've been there before. They've walked through that thing that you're experiencing right now. These are the examples in our lives. Paul's, we need Paul's in our life. They're important. We also need Barnabas's in our lives. These are people who are running alongside of us who are walking the same journey as us. These people give us courage. 
They're walking the same path as us. These are people that you sharpen and they sharpen you as well. These people are important to have in your life because these people make you better and you make them better as well. That's a, that a good sound effect at that point. That's really good. And finally, we need Timothys in our lives. Someone for us to pour into. Somebody that we're guiding. Because believe it or not, a lot of times when you're guiding someone, when you're in the position of being the example, you end up learning a lot. You end up learning maybe even more than when somebody's pouring into you. You're held to a higher standard because there's somebody who's watching your life. There's somebody who's watching the way that you react to things. There's somebody who's watching the way that you're walking. All of these relationships are important, and all of these affect us in our times of disappointment and discouragement. One of the things that I love most about God is that he designed for us to not be by ourselves. He designed us to not walk this thing out alone. We're made to walk with people. We're made to be in community with people. That is a big reason why we as people exist. That's a big reason why we as Go Church exist, is to be community to people who, who are, are walking this thing out. This is a place for people to grow, for people to bring their messes, and to be loved on by people who are trying to look like Jesus every day. Relationships are huge in our journey. Could we just be those relationships for other people in our lives? Could we be that? This morning, I, I want to remind us that discouragement is going to come. It's going to happen. There are things that life will bring that hurt you, that life brings that will disappoint you, that will beat you down. But this morning, can I challenge us to lean on God in those times? Can I challenge us to praise him and to give him thanks? Even before we've seen anything happen, even while we're still in the middle of the mess, because he is worthy of being praised, first of all, just because of who he is, not because of what he's done. He could do nothing else for us, and he's still worthy of being praised. But also because our praise proclaims the faith that we have in him, that he's working. Can we hold fast to our history? Can we remember the times when God has come through for us in the past? We can look back on the lions and the bears that God has defeated in our past and know that God that this giant that's standing in front of us has nothing on God and what he can do. And might I add, last week we talked about, uh, which I want to say Brother Rob preached a fantastic word last week, um, but he, 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 one of the things he talked about was not looking back on the glories of old, which I love. And, and, and if we're not careful, these two kind of intertwine with each other, holding fast to history and looking back on histories of old, but Looking back on history, we can't expect God to do the thing that he's wanting to do the exact same way that he's done it before in the past. We can look on our history and know that he's working on our behalf, but we, it doesn't always look the way that it's looked before in the past. And then finally, can we surround ourselves with the relationship? Can we rely on people in our lives that reflect Jesus well? And can we be those people, can we be those people that reflect Jesus well to other people as well? This morning, can we remember that we can lean on people who have strong relationships with God? And can we remember that we can be in community like this one, where people build each other up, are there for one another, who walk with each other through these things? Now, when difficulty comes up, we're there for one another. We're praying for one another. We're giving each other counsel and advice, and walking with each other through, through the difficulties that life brings inevitably. Would you guys stand um, this morning? I don't know where you're at this morning. Um, I don't know where you find yourself at in your life. I don't know what circumstances are standing before you. I don't know what kind of pain or hurt or disappointment that you're walking into this place with. But can I encourage you this morning that God is with you? That God is walking alongside you. 
that in the middle of your hurt, your discouragement, your pain, and and, and the middle of the valley that you find yourself in, God has been there every step of the way. There hasn't been a step, there hasn't been a moment where you've walked this thing by yourself. He's been with you. And he'll continue to be with you. Yeah, maybe things don't look the way that you would want for them to look. God's working for you. God's working for you behind the scenes. If you're in this place and and you find yourself in a place of discouragement, can we pray with you? Can we pray for you this morning? Could you lean on the community that's in this place? Could you rely on Jesus firstly, but could you let somebody in this morning? Could you let somebody walk alongside you this morning? Maybe you're in this place and and you've never accepted the Lord. You look back on your life and you've walked difficulty through difficulty through difficulty. I want to tell you this morning that the Lord's been waiting on you. That God's seen your disappointment. That he's seen your hurt. Pain that you're experiencing even right now. He just wants to tell you this morning that he wants to be your father. That he wants to love you, walk with you, and give you peace, and comfort, and joy. Maybe you're in this place and, 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 and you've You've said yes to a relationship with God, but you just haven't been walking with him lately. Today's today's your day to come back home. Today's your day to, to recommit your relationship with God. 